Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Reviewing Comics with me, your host, Alexander Turbin. Uh, today I'm going to be going over Revenge of the Prowler, number one, by Tim Truman and John K. Snyder III. Um, it's a 1988 comic from Eclipse Comics. Uh, but before we get into that, I'd like to show you some of my own work. This is Random Access. It's a uh, 12-page, full-size uh, usually full color, but I'm in black and white mode right now for the next uh, month or so. Uh, but then we'll be getting back to that. Um, <clears throat> uh, but it also, it's a 10 pages by me and then a couple pages of backup stories by, uh, different artists, uh, Christopher Knox and, um, uh, Paul, jo uh, Court John. Um, you can get these at, uh, patreon.com backslash Alex Turbin, or you can go to my website, alexanderturbin.com, and uh, that has uh, random access and um, all, a lot of these characters and stories uh, grouped up into different stuff like Cyrene the Cleric and Queller and stuff like that. Um, it also has Mutandus and uh, the Forlorn and basically any of the, of the other comic book work I've done in my uh, previous life. Um, <clears throat> or you can just contact me at... Uh, Alex Turbin 0441 at yahoo.com. That's my email. Uh, especially anybody that has a comic that they want reviewed or looked at on the channel. Um, just let me know if you send me an email because it might go to spam and then you might think I'm ignoring you and I wouldn't do that. So, The Prowler. Revenge of the Prowler. Uh, in 1988, I remember getting this this series. I only have, I think, the first one and the second one. I can't remember why why I stopped getting them. I think maybe I, I just didn't find them or, uh, or I don't know, they, they sold out at the LCS and, and I just didn't get any more. I know that I would have bought the whole series if I could have um, because I, I remember enjoying it, but now that I've reread re it, I'm, in, I'm enjoying it even more. Uh, th like I said, it's from 1988 and um, in 88, we're in the throes of it's been two years since Dark Knight Returns and um, uh, Watchmen and um, a bunch of other books that uh, are really um, uh, influential at the time. And they're all darker and grittier. And the Prowler uh, feeds off of that uh, emotion and, and that frenzy and, uh, in a good way. I mean, it's uh, Tim Truman, who you may know from Scout and um, Green Arrow, I think he did. And he did, he did a few other things for... Um, um, Eclipse, and he did some stuff for DC, and I don't think he ever worked for Marvel, but I don't know. If anybody knows if he worked for Marvel, let me know. Um, but this is Revenge of the Prowler. So, the story, this is the second series. The first series was a four-issue limited series, and it's basically a, um, a 1930s vigilante like, uh, um, The Shadow, or, um, uh, who's, is, who's the bronze man there? Um, Doc Savage, the bronze man. Um, <clears throat> and only he's a little bit more um, uh, brutal and violent. And like I said, it's in the throes of the the uh, the Dark Knight Returns where everything is darker and grittier. And um, <clears throat> the Prowler is definitely dark and gritty. Uh, so it basically is um, the Prowler tr uh, recruiting a sidekick and trying to turn him into the next Prowler. And... Um, I, I didn't read the first series, and I think I'm going to have to go back and find them because I don't think they're they're very expensive. Um, but there's doesn't really tell you a lot about what happened in the first series other than this kid met, uh, I can't remember his name, Casey, I think, or something like that. Um, and he's a, he's an art student, and he, he gets, um, I think this, this guy, the Prowler, um, hires him as like a, uh, an assistant or something. And then he learns that the, the, he learns about the Prowler. And like I said, the Prowler is trying to get, make him into his, the new Prowler or for the new age, because this is a modern time, 1988, um, <clears throat> comic. And the Prowler is like an old man and, you know, his, his crime fighting days are, are way over. Um, so there's a few things that happen and, um, I think uh, at first he thought of the kid with all this fun, larky kind of thing, uh, jokey kind of thing. But then there's um, he keeps having flashbacks to these dead bodies. Only I think they're vampires um, or something like that, cultists or something like that, um, which really is what makes me want to go back and reread these re or read the original series. So the first few pages are um, him talking about uh um 
He's talking about not the prowler. He's talking about how he's moved to the big city. He's talking to his aunt and uncle and he's writing a letter home and he's talking about how the big city and um, he's doing well. And he's really just he's, he's got a lot of these um, emotional issues because of the previous series where um, I guess the prowl, the, these vampires or whatever, were going to kill the kid and some other professor or something. And um Prowler goes down, goes in and mows them all down and kills a bunch of kids. So he's really having a hard time um, emotionally with this. And um, so he's, he's, but he's not conveying this to the aunt and uncle. For them, everything is fine and dandy. He's just talking a little bit about the old man and um, how he's not going to see him again. He doesn't know if he's still going to work for him or, or what. And um, so it's, it's a, it's a little off, um, Sorry. Um, it's a little off um, putting for him all of the kids dying in the bodies and stuff. And he just kind of sees them flashbacks and he actually has them in his paintings as well. One of my only problems with this this part of the book, because it's only um, what it's only three pages, but it's a lot of text to read. And it's this um, cursive writing and it's very hard to um to, to read I had to have my my glasses on which I do would anyway because I'm an old man but even if I didn't um, it's very difficult to read because of the um, the uh, the way it's written and thank God it's only three pages and I, I just kind of wish that they had been able to make it a little bit clearer um, but it's still it adds to uh, the ambiance of the uh, the uh, him writing a letter home so let me know what you guys think especially the creative um, artists out there um, what you think about the uh, the style of lettering and, um, and and is it worth it? Is it worth not being able to read very well or having a hard time deciphering it um, for some kind of authenticity about what the subject matter is? I, I'm very split, but because it's only three pages, I'm, I'm on board with it. Um, so he has all of these images of, of dead kids that the Prowler had killed. And he's uh, painting them because, like I said, he's an artist. And he's in art class. And um, they're supposed to be drawing um, fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. Anybody that's had an art class knows um, the still life. So you have to draw. Um, really, probably one of the worst things I ever had to do as an artist was draw still lifes. And I think I maybe did um, a few in art class. And then I was like, screw this. I've never done a still life on my own. Um, but uh, if you're an artist out there, let me know what you guys think of still lifes. So anyway, the um, he's supposed to be doing a still life of these fruit, this this bunch of fruit or whatever. And the um, the art teacher comes up and, and sees that he's drawing this other stuff. Um, the um, people, the kids getting killed, slaughtered and stuff. And he's like, it's gruesome. He loves it. He thinks it's great. I mean, he's supposed to be drawing something else, painting something else, but he doesn't care because he's, he's so enamored with it. And he thinks it's really great. And his, his technique is really cool. And he's really into it. Um, but then the kid um, takes off. I can't, I can't remember his name. Um, Mr. Kida, his, his name's last name's Kida. I can't remember his his first name. Anyway, we'll get to back to that. Um, so he gets pissed off at the art teacher. He's got these emotional problems going on, these emotional issues uh, because of what the Prowler did. And um, so he kind of takes off out of the uh, art class. He storms off, which anybody, if you've been in an art class, um, that happens. And it happened a couple times at Cubers. There was one time where um, we were having this... Um, um, Oh, what do you call it? Where you uh, critique? We we're having a critique, and one of the other other artists got so angry about what people were saying, which nobody was saying anything that bad. And I believe maybe the teacher was the one that was saying something. He he took his board, his drawing board, and smashed it over his knee and ran and like walked out of the class. So that I mean, it does happen, but this is uh, a, an extreme, and it's because of the prowler and not because of some stupid critique. Um, so. He's taken off, and then, and then this girl, Scott, Scott Keita, I guess his name is. Um, she's she's sweet on him. She she wants she wants him, and um, he's having a hard time. So she feels for him, and all this other stuff. So they're just just kind of walking back to his apartment or or his dorm or whatever. I think it's I'm pretty sure it's a dorm. Um, 
And she's just trying to figure out what's going on. She's like, did this uh, old man do anything to you? Was he violent with you or whatever? Um, and then she she kind of hints that she wants to go in with him uh, by saying she'll have lunch by herself or whatever. And he's like, come on, I might have something. Um, so they go back, they go into his dorm and it's kind of a mess, of, of course, obviously. It's a, it's a uh, teenage guy in art school. Of course, it's going to be a mess. Um, and, but he lives on his own, which is cool. And uh, she kind of pokes around asking uh, a picture of his parents. Or, and he's like, no, my parents are dead. My grandparents took care of me or whatever. And um, so they kind of just have this same conversation. And she's looking at all of the artwork that he's done of the Prowler. And, and she's she's saying that he's got to get some kind of um, emotional help. Or she's, he's got to talk to somebody about it. And he just kind of, um, just kind of uh, you know... Wops, wipes it off his back or whatever. He he just like is uh, he's like I'll I'll deal with it. I guess I'm not going to see him or whatever. And she really um she really drives it home when when she shows uh one of the pictures that he's drawn and she she's like this this guy's um, crazy and if he's doing bad stuff to you you got to tell somebody and you got to talk to somebody. So they just kind of have this little thing and he actually um, sheds a tear here. And um, which is a nice emotional moment. And she doesn't know how to handle it. I don't know whether she sees it or whether she's just um, kind of uh, thrown off by this whole emotional exchange. But she just kind of uh, takes off. She's, she's just like, well, if you ever want to talk, then um, we can we can talk about it or whatever. Um, he grabs the costume that I don't know if the Prowler made that for him. Um, or whether he made it or, or what, but he was returning it to going to return it to the Prowler. I think he had had enough. So then it actually goes to the Prowler's mansion. I don't know if it's a mansion or just a house or whatever. And the old man's lifting weights, and he's like he's like uh, from the 30s, so he's like 80 years old. Like I said, this is very very dark night um, inspired and um, in in such a good way. But you can also see the noir kind of. Um, pulpy heroes that um both jk snyder and um and timothy truman have for the genre and i mean there's been a lot of different people modern people that have done um noir stuff other than frank miller that's been really good i mean hey howard jakin has done a bunch of stuff walt simonson walt simonson um there's there's a lot of people that really enjoy that kind of um that whole part of history and um i think it's really cool um so he comes in, Scott goes in, and he's like, I'm going to return this to you, and I'm done with this, and I'm also going to report it to the police. Um, this is the part right here um, where uh, the Prowler says, Scott, I've, I've already notified the police. I wanted the bodies to be recovered, but I wanted them to be found in the murder legendary's underground lair with the drugs that the zombie maker provided them in the laboratory where he was working his evil. What sort of mer monster do you think I am? So, I mean, there's, I think there's vampires too. Um, yeah, I'm going to call the police, Leo, tell them about the vampire college kids. So there was vampires, there were zombies, there was uh, mad scientists. So there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in this previous series. So I'm definitely going to go try to find it. Maybe, uh, uh, T trade paperback of any kind so they just kind of have an argument about um he's scott says i'm out of here i didn't bargain for killing people because that's what the prowler did he mowed them all down with his his tommy gun and um but they're interrupted by these two other old stir old timers and um the prowler introduces him to uh scott to these other two guys and apparently there were two uh cohorts that he had back in the days when he was he was the really the prowler and um, was doing going on missions all the time and stuff like that. And um, they knew who he was and he knew who they were. And the prowler tells them that they can talk freely in front of Scott because he knows all about this stuff. And um, so one of the guys um, shows the prowler this uh, kitty porn magazine and the prowler's like, I didn't know you were into this. And um, um the guy's like, I don't. It's it's not for me. Uh, and then he explains that his son and their mother of of the granddaughter, his granddaughter, who was 10, um, the parents had like a divorce. They were going through a divorce or something. So the kid ran away and they were looking all around for her and they couldn't find anything. And then one, eventually one of his co-workers or somebody that worked for him uh, found this magazine and it had the 10-year-old on it. And so she's obviously... 
um, being beaten and abused and, and sexually molested and all of this stuff. And he wants the prowler to, to help him find um, find the uh, 10 year old daughter and get her back. And the prowler's like, of course we will. No problem. And Scott, who was going to quit, who didn't want to any, have anything to do with any of this stuff anymore. He's like um, the prowler's like, of course we'll help. And then he says, uh, won't we, Scott? And he says, Mr. Corby, let's find your granddaughter. So Scott is back in. And I think I do have number two, which I'm definitely going to read. And I'm, I'm going to get three and four because I am all in because um, really, let, let's go to the, the story and the art, the, the writing and the art anyway. But the story has me. It's gripped me. The rest is um, some advertisements. Zot. I'm going to do some Zot. Um, and then uh, there's a backup story of the Prowler back in the um, in the 30s when he was young and, and virile and um, doing his different cases and stuff. I'm not going to go over this. Maybe I'll go over this some other time. Maybe um, if I have the whole series... And I think this is a continuing series as well. I'll um, go through this at some point too. Uh, but the, my main focus is the um, original story. So, um, like I said, it's um, John K. Snyder III, who, uh, as some of you probably know, or maybe don't, he's uh, Grendel. Uh, I think he, did he do some did he do some Batman? I think he also drew some Batman. Um, so he's drew he's drawn a few things. And um, like, and also, like I said, uh, Tim Truman, he's done Scout. He's done um, a whole bunch of, a whole slew of stuff. Um, the writing, let's go into the writing first. I can't really remember a, a lot of the writing that um, Tim Truman does. I know it's dark and gritty. And um, he says uh, somewhere in one of these advertisements or something that the characters are kind of slightly based on uh, the writer and the artist because the artist, I guess, um, JK is a, um, kind of an upbeat kind of person. And I guess, uh, Tim Truman is a little bit of a pessimist. So the characters he kind of, um, derived from the artists and the writers characters themselves, which is pretty cool. Um, but a lot of times I talk about voices, um, the character's voice and their, um, their intentions and their actions. And, uh, it, that really kind of shows a good writing or not. Um, and it really does. I mean, the art teacher sounds completely like a real art teacher. And um, in, in, even especially the writing, the uh, the letter home, it's completely got, has so much voice, so much um, of the own characters. There's even parts where um, he starts to misspell a word. So he crosses it out and then he tries again and he crosses it out again because it's still misspelled. And then he, he eventually gets it. So each character has their own unique voice. And it's completely flowing and and original and organic, and it's not forced at all, which is one of the really the great things. You can kind of tell when a character, uh, somebody's writing a character, and it just kind of feels uh, a little bit forced. Like maybe they're saying things that uh, either they maybe wouldn't, or um, it wasn't just done the right way. Um, my favorite writers, comic book writers specifically, are the ones that really can generate a good voice for the the characters. Um, uh, Quentin Tarantino is probably the very best at that. A lot of his characters sound the same, but they're, it's still they've all, all got unique and different voices. Um, the as for the plot, plot is very thick. There's not very many pages. I don't think it's even a full size comic book. It's a uh, seventeen. It's only eighteen pages. So I mean, there's not a lot of pages, but a lot of story is put together. And even though I didn't know what was going on, what happened in the previous. Um, issues. Um, I was both intrigued and I did parse together the things that happened by instead of a, a beginning intro letter, which is what I, I like a lot of things or the Marvel way or the first page is you describe what happened in the previous issues. Um, it kind of just parses together through, through through the story. And I kind of enjoy that a little bit better because it doesn't waste the space, the story space of either the, the uh, intro page or the first page. It uh, just can go back, go right into the action or go right into the story. And it's not like bogged down by any of this other extraneous stuff that you have going on. Um, it's it's got some it's got some let's it's noir inspired and it's got some really great um uh places where you can uh, really tell that like the old man um I know that's not written it's not we haven't gotten to the art part yet um but yeah it's it's a lot of there's not a lot of action so um 
there's no talking heads. There's a lot of people just talking. But if there's, like I said, there's no talking heads. And even when there is talk, talking heads, it's broken up. So um, that, that again, is, is part of the art. So the writing, I really, I truly enjoyed it. And I remember it. I remember enjoying it before when I read it the first time back in 88. But I um, I like it now even more that I, than I just read reread it. Maybe I was getting a little burnt out on this kind of thing. Maybe I was like, uh, oh, this is just a Dark Knight ripoff and uh, it's just a Frank Miller ripoff because um, J.K. Snyder is, um, um, he is, he's a great artist, um, but he's also, um, he's, he's, he's very reminiscent of Frank Miller. And um, let's go into the art. Um, the beginning, it's dark, it's dark. Let's see who does the colors because the colors is part of it. Like this whole um, monochrome blue um, uh, coloring. Julie, Mi Julie Michael does the coloring, and really that adds. Excuse me, that adds a lot to the um, the art, really, because I could see this as black and white, but he's you know as a color, it really is fantastic because it's got a little bit more muted tones. And um, it's a little bit darker than your average comic book. Um, I really love, like I, I've said, I like the panel layout. Um, li um, as I've said before, we don't have motion in comics. So having a surprise in comics is really difficult. Um, one of the things he's, he's uh, reminiscing about the um, the whole Prowler scene. And then it shows his painting. And then it shows him. So it's not really like an in-your-face surprise. But it's more like a um, a general reveal of uh how the character is feeling and he's got these dark circles under his eyes he's hunched over he's um he's got paint on his his uh his uh pants he's just kind of um drooped over and people are looking at him they know that something's wrong so that is really a a great great um um artistic uh whatever that's that's really fantastically done just um i mean it conveys exactly what the artist and the writer have um, what they want to say about the story. And really, this, the artist, you can tell, wants to do some cool um, Batman kind of stuff, some cool Dark Knight kind of stuff. I mean, he's in this for this kind of story. Um, and I think he wants to draw some action. But even though he's not drawing this action scenes, he's putting his all into these just quiet talking scenes. And really, that's where the story goes through. I mean, he could have just gone, done a... Um, a side panel of these characters, but no, he does a, uh, an overhead view and then a close up of the, uh, the picture and then a side view, which he's darkened. So really, I really am loving, um, Snyder's work here. I think maybe when I first read it, I didn't like it so much. I, like I said, I was, uh, maybe I thought he was a little bit too much like Frank Miller. Um, but even though he's not, he's got a little bit more of a cartoony feel to him than, um, Miller does. Um, but he's got really some great panels. Not once did I have to um, go back and reread anything. He never used a uh, never used an arrow to convey where where he wanted me to look. And um, also, everything flows very nicely and beautifully. Even the panels that are are um, butted up together or over overlapping or whatever, they they read really beautifully, and you know exactly where to go and what to do. And it it conveys the story so beautifully. Um, so, yeah, it's it's really a, a fantastic. He's really a fantastic artist, and I think I'm gonna have to go back and um, find some more J.K. stuff and um, kind of go over it and and uh, um, enjoy it because I really do think it's awesome. Uh, he does he does some really great close ups. He's he's got some really fantastic close ups, and um, like I said, in fight scenes where you uh, you need a, a different variety of things, you need the close ups. You need the back um, to the um the far away shots and to really change things up but that's the same thing if not more important than when people are having a discussion or a um or you know talking heads um which this none of this is talking yet so it's really fantastic so this is a really great book um revenge of the prowler number one uh from 1988 i heartily recommend it and um i'm gonna give this a nine 
I I did not anticipate giving this a nine. This was one of those things that I was just like, well, it's in my comic bin, and I've wanted to do some Eclipse comics, review some Eclipse comics, because I really do like a lot of Eclipse stuff. And um, Tim Truman, I really do like his stuff, too, for the most part. I'm going to do some scouts and, and whatever else I can find with his. Um, and John Kay, um, like I said, he did some Grendel, which Grendel is one of my favorite series of all time. Um, so... Uh, the Prowler, Revenge of the Prowler, great book. I highly recommend it, especially if you like any kind of uh, noir, uh, 80s kind of, because this definitely does have an 80s vibe to it. Um, 80s, uh, noir, uh, vigilante kind of stuff. It's it's really it's really great. And even if you don't like all that stuff, it's so well written and so well drawn that I really recommend it. I'm giving this a nine, and I think it's really great. Uh, story in a book and I'm going to go looking for some more. Um, so if you guys like this kind of content, uh, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell and also leaving a thumbs up if you like this book and if you like uh, this kind of content, the uh, lesser known comics getting a little bit of love. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time and keep on creating.